Are you thinking about starting a cleaning business, but you're not sure if you should do residential cleaning or office cleaning? Well, you are in the right place. But first, play that intro. Okay, so quickly, I wanna give a little bit of a distinction for anybody who is a complete newbie and they just heard about a cleaning business and they don't really know too much about it. Let me give you a little bit of a distinction between a residential business and a commercial cleaning business. So first, residential is what it sounds like. You are cleaning. Typically, you're cleaning houses and where people actually live. You're cleaning people's homes, okay? Commercial is you're cleaning business accounts. You are cleaning churches, you're cleaning gyms, you're cleaning dealerships, you're cleaning doctor's offices, just medical offices in general. So that's, I'm gonna give a little bit of a difference there. If you're thinking about doing both, you need to unthink that and this video is gonna be perfect for you, okay? So. When the, when the pandemic hit last year, things started to set in and we were all very scared. Everybody. For that, the heck with business. I mean, we were just scared in general, health and loved ones and things of that nature. Uh, once things began to calm down though, um, maybe like a couple of months later, uh, we started hitting the warmer months and things started to settle, whatever. Um, we bumped into one of our buddies who lives in the same complex as us and he owns a residential cleaning business and he was doing awesome but then the pandemic hit so you would think because a lot of businesses were closed down and everything that we do office cleaning that we would have been crushed but in fact it was the exact opposite we actually managed to grow. Sure, we had a couple of accounts that kind of went down temporarily, but we were able to work out a thing where it was like, hey, listen, instead of paying for the full month, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, we're gonna completely deep clean top to bottom, um, we're gonna do your carpets, things like that. Anything to bridge the gap with extra services to keep us whole and keep making sure our cleaners got paid. And guess what? They loved the idea, they signed up for it. They said, yeah, you know what? During this month, go in there, crush it, and then we'll just, it'll be status quo. On the flip side, our buddy, he lost, this is what he said, he lost 85% of his accounts. 85% of his residential accounts. Now he's been doing this for 20 something years. We've been doing it for five plus years, okay? He got absolutely hammered and now, I was trying to figure it out because this guy runs an amazing business, five star reviews, out the wazoo. Absolutely a superstar, somebody I admire very much. And when he got hammered like that, I was really puzzled because we grew. And I, would, I was just trying to ask like, hey, do you think, do you know why this happened or what happened? And he said, absolutely. And the answer he gave, I'm going to make reason number one for why you should choose office cleaning over residential cleaning. Reason number one, right from our buddy's mouth, was necessity versus luxury. Now, what does that mean? I wanna give you a quote I heard years ago. And this is when we were just starting in the game. And one of our early mentors told us that in, even in a down economy, people will clean their own house, but lawyers and doctors won't clean their toilets. Now, you're like, what, that's, that, that's, how could you say that about everyone? Look, it's just a quote. It's a quote from everyone. It basically means when, when the chips are down and things are a little bit tight, house, cleaning your house is a little bit of a luxury. Meaning, oh, I can just have my kids clean the house or I could just clean the house, things like that. But a doctor or a CEO of a company, chances are if the space is a nice size, they're, they're not gonna walk around cleaning up their, they're not gonna clean their office. They're not gonna take out all the garbage. They're not gonna scrub their toilets and things of that nature. That's the big difference. See, when you own a business and you own a, a commercial space and you have multiple employees and even in a down economy, you still have to make sure that place is clean. You still, you can't have your place look like a complete disaster because what happens if you have a customer or something come in? and your place looks like crap. That is your reputation. Now your house on the other hand, you obviously don't want that to look like crap, but it's something that you can easily do. So because of that, that really forced me to think to myself like, wow, necessity versus luxury. We have a, a cleaner, a house cleaner, but we only have it once a week. 
uh, right now just to you know just touch up a bunch of high touch dust areas because you know we're kind of like doing the thing daily and uh, yeah we thought we find it's helpful but it doesn't make or break our life you know we're gonna be moving into our own office and you, you say to myself I can only have one which will I choose I'm gonna choose the necessity the necessity is clean have the office cleaned the the luxury is the nice cleaning woman we have that cleans once a week to do the high touch dusting and things like that do you see the difference reason number two for selecting commercial cleaning and office cleaning over residential cleaning and that is day man versus the night man some of you guys get that reference so day man versus night man it was a big reason why we were able to go in the direction we went and the thing that helped us big time day man versus nightmare so what does that mean that means when you're starting a residential cleaning primarily that cleaning is done during the day whereas commercial cleaning and business cleaning primarily that doesn't start until people leave their offices and that's typically around i don't know anywhere between 3 and 6 p.m sometimes 8 p.m but it's after that time so why is this an advantage well when you're just starting a business a lot of people work normal nine to five and if you're at a nine to five or an eight to four or a seven to three better to have a business that can run when you're not at work or else you'll be sitting there like oh my god did, did dan show up did steve show up oh my god i'm at work i can't do anything about it oh my god a client's calling me i'm stuck at work do you see the difference the big advantage is, is at nighttime you can grow your business you can start your office cleaning business while you have your nine to five and grow it at night it's like a different world at night at nighttime you can go and you can train employees how are you going to train during the daytime or if you have to go pick something up at home depot after it's easy peasy no problem but if you have to go if you already get to work and your cleaners get to the site and they're like oh i don't have windex i don't have this i don't have that and you're like ah i don't know what to do it is a big advantage and i'm telling you right now if you are just starting your business and you have a nine to five and you want to hold on to that a little bit as you get this thing churning and burning into an roi machine then you are definitely going to want to do commercial cleaning now on the flip side if you are if you work from three to eleven it might be the absolute opposite for you you might actually want a residential cleaning business but i digress reason number three for choosing commercial cleaning over residential cleaning and that is staffing difficulties so staffing difficulties this kind of ties in a little bit with the last one um, one thing we found to be a huge nightmare in the beginning were our counts were too small when we first started out our average client was like 600 bucks a month that's not a lot but in the beginning we were so happy to be getting business we were like Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Poo! i don't know what i was doing so we were super excited, but guess what? When it was time to staff those accounts out, we had a harder time staffing those accounts for two reasons. One, buying equipment just for like a small space didn't make, it, didn't make a lot of sense. Meaning buying nice equipment for like a small space just wasn't profitable. And two, most importantly, we had no luck getting cleaners, potential cleaners excited about saying, hey, do you want to do you want to do this office you'll get paid uh i don't know 109 dollars a month like what yeah no it's 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 a uh, it's one time every two weeks and people are like i cash at least like no no we can't we don't pay cash no i don't want that do you see it was such a nightmare and here's another thing Hiring during the day part-time and hiring during the night part-time. It is way easy to hire at night for part-time because typically during the day, most people are looking for a full-time job. Whereas at night, you're just looking for a little extra money to maybe help pay another, you know, pay some bills around the house. Maybe you just got a new car and you can use an extra 300 bucks a month. So yeah, I'll do a small account like in my neighborhood. Yeah, one, two, three, that's a good deal. But if you hire part-time for the daytime what you're gonna what's gonna happen is your turnover is gonna be really high your cleaner turnover because as soon as they find a full-time job most full-time jobs happen to be during the day they're gonna well, guess what they're gonna do to your small job they're gonna say peace 
So it's a big advantage for hiring part-time at night. It's another reason why, in my opinion, you should choose office cleaning over residential cleaning. Reason number four, that you should choose a commercial cleaning business over a residential business. That is, less is more. What are you talking about, dude? Generally, unless your commercial accounts are so tiny, you are going to need a lot more residential accounts than commercial accounts to actually hit six figures. Just to give you an idea, one of my dealerships, let's go with like middle ground account. One of my dealerships is like $8,000 a month. That's just a, that's just like a normal, like it's a little bit of a high end, but it's pretty normal. It's not, it's not too far. Um, so that's $8,000 a month. That alone, you know, brings six figures to the company. That, that one, one account. How many account, how many residential accounts do you think you would need to hit $8,000? Well, I haven't done the math because I am extremely unprepared, but just to give you an idea, uh, a typical house cleaning, like maybe like once or twice a week, um, you know, for the month. I mean, you could be looking somewhere, you know, a couple hundred bucks, right? I could be off by a hundred or two, but that's basically it, a couple hundred bucks. So how many will you need to hit that six figure mark? I'm pausing so you can do the math. I mean, I, I don't even, it, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a lot, it's a lot more. So because of that reason, I tend to favor office cleaning because, you know, even my smaller end medical offices where it's maybe three times a week, I mean, $2,500, I mean, that's, that's amazing, just for three visits per week. Whereas residential, again, you're just gonna, you're gonna be taking a lot more. I mean, obviously there's bigger residential accounts that, you know, could be a thousand dollars a month, I, I think, but I don't think that's very common because your average person and you're depending on your area, unless you're in a really wealthy neighborhood and there's huge houses and then you're doing it daily, that's a different ball game, but that's not typically how it, how it goes for most, right? How it goes for most is, you know, you're just contracted to show up once per week to do with kind of like I have going on. I just have somebody come once a week. And, you know, you're paying like, you're paying like, I don't know, 200 bucks. It's, it's a lot. You need a lot of those clients to get to six figures. And lastly, number five. Reason number five, you should choose an office cleaning business over a residential cleaning business. Growth speed. I know, I know, this kind of ties into the last one, but I think it deserves its own mini chapter, if you will, because growth speed is important. Look, it's not everyone's dream to own a giant cleaning business. At least it wasn't mine. I said to myself, I would love to automate my cleaning business so I can go off and do other things. You know, maybe I want to be an author. Maybe I want to be a YouTuber. Maybe there's like a bunch of things I you know, thought maybe I want to do that. So to go off and really automate a company so you can go off into the world and do something else, you need something that is reliable, something that has recurring revenue, and something that grows pretty quickly so it doesn't take you 16 years to get a client book this fast to make your six figures or beyond that you need to take care of yourself as you not only quit your job, your partner quits their job, you have health insurance, your cars are taken care of, your rent's taken care of, your bills are taken care of, and you have disposable income to go out and make it happen, whatever that thing is. Some people, I lost some people. Some people are like, what is he talking about? Look, this is what I'm talking about. If your average cleaning account for an office cleaning business is let's say 2,500. That's pretty low, but let's say that's your average size account. You know, five clients, and what are you working with? You're working with $10,000 per month. Whereas if you're just in a general neighborhood, you know, nice neighborhood where they just, you know, you're getting a lot of clients and your average client is like, I don't know, let's, let's, let's say it's $400 a month. So you need a lot more clients to get to where the commercial cleaning company is if we're just, if it's a race to $10,000 per month or $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, you get it. It takes a lot, it's a lot easier to get there with commercial than residential because 
back to number one, I mean back to number four, less is more. So the growth speed is great. The ROI is incredible. The recurring revenue is, I mean, people don't leave. People are just gonna stick around unless you really mess them over. And honestly, if you treat your clients like garbage, you deserve to be left. I mean, that's just, that's just the truth of it. That, you know, when you find great clients, you take care of those great clients. You take care of your great cleaners and neither will ever leave you, okay?